this is just a little video on how to do a little um, name and subject sticker with your name and the subject that you teach or the room that you teach in or whatever like that. Um, the first part of your sticker is going to be with a connected font, which is just a, a way of talking about like a, a script or cursive font where the letters are connected to each other. And then the next font will be disconnected, just like a simple um, print font. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over here in a Silhouette Studio on the left hand side and choose this A. This is the alpha tool. Then I can click anywhere on my workspace and then I'll get a blinking cursor. I'm going to type my name, Miss Wallace. Oops. There we go. And then this part of the um, sticker is going to be with a connected font. So I can click on my name here and then up in the top toolbar, I can scroll down and pick any font that I'd like. So I have a lot of fonts on my computer um, that I've downloaded. So like you probably don't have the Amarillo font on your computer. I like to use the website 1001freefonts.com, but there are so many websites where you can download free fonts offline. Um, so take a look, find some fonts that you really like. Any fonts will, um, will work for this as long as it's a connected one. We're gonna talk a little bit about what fonts are good and what fonts are not so great in a second. So I'll just choose the Almoria font just to um, sh for this example since I already talked about that. And I'm going to zoom in. Um, to zoom in right on my name here, I'll just click on my name. And then in the top toolbar, there's a zoom in and a zoom out button. And then there's also this button that um, looks like a little mouse and a uh, magnifying glass. If you click on that and then click on a shape, it's going to zoom in like right to, to there. That's kind of, um, it can be helpful. So essentially what we want to do is connect these shapes. So if you look at the miss part of my name, the M and the S are separate here. But if we look at the Wallace part, the A, the L's, and the A's, the C, E here, those overlap. So this, um, the red line is essentially the machine path. So that's the path the X-Acto knife in the Silhouette Cameo is going to take. And if you think about what this would look like if it were to cut out, um, it, the, when, when the machine cut out the A, it would cut in to the L. So we don't want that to happen. We don't want that to be overlapped at all. So I can just click on this font, or on my lit name here, and then up in the very top of the bar, um, there is this little shortcut tool. It's right next to the star. It looks like a rectangle and a circle connected. This is the weld tool. So if I click weld, that's going to connect any overlapping parts of the font. So I'm just gonna undo it so we can watch it again and kind of check out right in this area where the L's are in my last name. I'm gonna click and you can see that that overlapping part disappears. So now we no longer have that, um, those separate or the, those overlapping lines that would cut into the letters. Uh, we can even do it a, a little more if we wanted to. Um, you could move the A's and the L over a little. I'm going to um, right click on my name here. I'm going to write release compound path. It's kind of like a, di a way that the silhouette program says ungroup. Uh, so I'm going to select these, this part of my name, the A L L L A C E. And I'm just going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to scooch it over just a smidgen. So the A and the L, uh, W are overlapping. Now I'm going to click on the L is part of my name and hold the Shift T key down and click on the W. Then I'm going to use that Weld key one more time. So now you can see that the W and the A are overlapping. So this would just now be one sticker. I can highlight everything. This is now including the letters as well as these inside parts of the L and the L and the E. And then I can right click on those and go down to make compound path or group. That's just a way of making the, um, the letters. When I click on it, it's gonna move it all together. And then I'm just gonna move it a little closer over here. For the misses part, these letters are separate, but if I wanted to, um, this is just, again, just extra. You don't have to do this part, but I could click on, if I double click on the letter, it's gonna show me the nodes. So each of these little uh, gray boxes is a node. If I click on it, I can change how the shape looks. And there's gonna give me a lot of different uh, point editing options. I can click simplify. That's just gonna kind of smooth out and get rid of some of those nodes. 
Um, but essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this note here and stretch it out so that it hits the M. And I'm going to do the same thing over here with this little M over there. And then I'm going to add a node and choose this um, curvy part. So I just want to kind of make this a little curvier so that I get a nice little like curve in my... Now I want this one. There we go. You just move that one up a little bit and move that one up a little bit. There we go. And now if I zoom back out a little bit, I can select these shapes and press weld. Now something happened there that we don't want to do. So um, because I kind of messed with the S a little bit and changed it, the program was no longer thinking the M and the S were letters. They were just kind of treating them as random shapes. It could be an M or an S, or it could be a star, or the outline of a flower, or whatever. Essentially, what happened when I pressed weld is it connected those shapes, um, and it got rid of any overlapping parts. That overlap included where the S connected with the M, but it also included the interior part of the S right here. So to weld these together without messing up that little S, I can click on my S here, and if I drag this away, you can see that the inside was actually going to stay put. So I'll go back, click on the S, hold my Shift key down again, click on the M, and then use that weld one more time. Now the M and the S are connected, and the interior part of the S are there, is there too. I'm going to zoom back out and close this point editing part of my uh, menu, and then I'm just going to select both parts of the name, the Mrs. and the Wallace, and then I'm going to um, right click again and either group it together or make it a compound path. Uh, there's also a short key for that up in the upper part, um, upper toolbar. Um, right in the middle here there's these little boxes. The one on the left says group selected shapes. I'm going to choose that and now when I move it around it's going to be one shape. So there's our Miss Wallace part of the, um, part of the sticker. Next I'm going to add the subject that I teach. So I'm going to go back to the alpha tool and click over here. I'm going to have mine say Fab Lab, but you could have yours say Science or Math or Reading or Library or Room 607, whatever you'd like. Now I'm going to choose a font for this, for the Fab Lab. Now I want to talk about fonts a little bit. So remember, this is a machine path. So this is the path that an X-Acto knife is going to be taking. And then this is also what we're going to have to be peeling away or weeding away the vinyl around. So this simple aerial font, very simple, obviously nice straight smooth lines. There are interior parts, so I would have to go back in and peel out, weed out the inside of the A's and the B's. Um, but that, that, it wouldn't be very difficult. They're simple, it's a nice simple font. If we kind of go through and look at some fonts, I want to show you some examples of fonts that are good for um, vinyl cutting and fonts that aren't so great. So this font, this is called the Curls font. Um, this is an example of a font that isn't great for vinyl cutting. Anything that's going to curl in on itself like this won't be a great choice for vinyl because the X-Acto knife is going to have to kind of spiral in really close to a, a cut that it just made. And that's just going to increase the, uh, um, the likelihood of the X-Acto knife kind of tearing through the vinyl or making, uh, making a small mistake. So anything with curls like this isn't a great choice. Also, it gets really, really skinny in this curl part. So anytime that there's pieces that are really thin, really skinny, it's also going to be difficult to weed and difficult to cut. Another font that I love, it's a really fun font to use, but it's not a great choice for vinyl cutting, is called Joker Man. Um, let me find it really quickly. Joker Man is super fun, but it is not great to weed. So I'm going to click on here. You can see the Joker Man has lots of like zigzaggies or these little like key bits taken out. There's all these extra little dots. Um, Fab Lab doesn't have that many funny letters, but this font can get crazy. If you're just making one sticker, it wouldn't be too bad. But if you were making like a class set of stickers or anything like that, you would be weeding forever trying to get all these little pieces. So Joker Man isn't the best choice of font. There are also fonts that um, are called stencil fonts and some of the, there's like the basic one stencil you've seen this one before it's used for spray painting stencils all over the place um, but there are other kinds of stencil fonts and if you use one of those free font websites you can look for other stencils that aren't this really basic stencil font 
Essentially, a stencil font means that no, there are no interior parts of the letters. So what I mean by that is if we go up here to the, um, to the L in Wallace, this part right here, the inside of the L, if you were to weed this word, you'd have to go back in with your tweezers and weed the inside part. It's totally separate from the rest of the sticker. But if we look down here at Fab Lab, there is no inside part. So if you were to pull away the exterior part of the sticker, you would just be left with the letters. There's nothing left to go in and pick out. So this makes weeding very difficult. Uh, and like I said, there's tons of other stencil fonts. You can go and kind of find some other options that maybe aren't this kind of basic-y looking one. Um, and they're not, you know, called stencil font. I love this font. It's called Bold Font. It is super bold, super simple. Um, I love it. This is the one that I'm going to use for my second part of my sticker. Now, if I click on Fab Lab here, and I'm just thinking about welding again, if we go and click the weld button, nothing's going to happen because there are no overlapping parts. This is a disconnected font. Um, the only thing it is going to do is separate out your letters. So now you can move them individually. So I'm just going to move that A back. I'm going to grab these guys, click up here to my group button one more time, and then zoom out. So now I have the Mrs. Wallace part of my name and the Fab Lab part. Now part of the instructions said that it should be 10 inches wide and no more than 6 inches high. So I'm going to, um, I want to put these, group these together to make one sticker. Now to do that, I want to make sure that the Fab Lab part is right underneath my name. So I'm going to draw a selection box around both of these parts, the name and the Fab Lab. Um, and then once you select both of these, you're going to be able to click on some options up here at the top um, in your, the top toolbar. We have the, um, this little arrow button. It's, you're going to be able to change the size. You can make it smaller. You can make it bigger. You could just go back to the regular 100%. Uh, this little arrow button, the little cross arrows, that's, you can move stuff that way. Easy way to just kind of wiggle things around. But what we're going to click on is these little, um, it's a, like a horizontal line with three bars through it. This is the alignment tool. So if I click on this um, center of the page, it's going to move things right on top of each other. So now they are centered in both directions. We obviously don't want that. They're going to overlap. Um, we could click the um, this one align left. It's going to pull everything over to the left. I want this one right here in the center, align center. It's going to make sure that the Fab Lab is directly underneath the um, Mrs. Miss Wallace part of my name. I'm actually going to make the Fab Lab part a little bit bigger about five inches. There we go. And then I'll select these one more time. Use that alignment tool. Make sure it's right in the center. And then I'm going to group them one more time. So now I have one sticker. We're all set. Everything is together. And then the, um, like the instruction said, we want it to be 10 inches wide and no more than six inches high. So we can either grab this and kind of pull it this way till we get it to be as close to 10 inches as we can get it right about there. Or you can go up to that arrow button again, and right in this 9.954, you can just type 10. Um, and actually, we would want to click, make sure this little lock is um, clicked and click close so that it does maintain its proportions and we don't get anything uh, out of whack. And there we have our sticker. It's all good to go. I'm um, just thinking about colors really quickly. Over here on the right-hand side, there is the fill panel, and I could click on it and say I want it to be pink or I want it to be yellow or whatever. Um, this is going to, to uh, just change the color of the inside of your shape. Remember, colors don't matter the, when you're designing in silhouette. The only colors that, you're, that do, does matter is this red outline. That's the machine path that, it's, that the um, machine is going to take to cut out your vinyl. And um, you just want to make sure that every cut that you take, that you want, is outlined in red. And then the, well, how you figure out what color your sticker is going to be is what color goes into your vinyl cutting machine. So there we go. We got our, our um, sticker, Miss Wallace Fab Lab. I'm just going to pull that up to the top of my screen, and we are good to go.